Hello, welcome to this MagicAd for Revit new feature video. This is for MagicAd 2.18 update release 1 and this particular feature is the major feature of this uh, new release which is the MagicAd schematics module. Um, this is actually an independent module in its own right as you can see here it's in the uh, ribbon as its own tab there and in this tool the whole idea uh, of this uh, actual feature uh, or uh, particular module itself is that the user can now link schematic items as shown here on the screen so anything in the schematic and a drafting view to the model um, so the big powerful uh, element of this particular tool is that having uh, schematic items linked into the model means we can inherit parameters from the schematic into the model and vice versa from the model into the schematic which has been uh, something that's uh, been uh, wished for in, in Revit for uh, uh, for a long time so this is now going to release that um, that ability to have complete consistency between your schematics and the model and be able to save a lot of time when you're drawing schematics in terms of inheriting data so you're not having to produce that separately uh, manually in another package somewhere with hand markups or whatever it is so um, this has been the missing link really between um, uh, the schematic and the model for MEP anyway um, so in this um, new tool we have these uh, uh, schematic drawing tools here which is adding symbols or drawing ducts or pipes or wires but the big difference is they now appear like a palette so if you want to add a symbol or uh, add a line you can see it's now a nice handy tool palette which makes things very slick to, to draw with and that's completely customizable by the user uh, so you're not forced to use any kind of magic ad type functions or symbols or lines you can customize these however you wish so I've just done these myself before and each version for the market area um, uh, will ship with the appropriate symbols so um, you can draw the, the duct line uh, just like that and then pre-configure the uh, duct lines you want to draw and then we can then set about drawing those straight into the into the model as like so you can see that draws the supply in there and then we could continue that with the chain command but or just click create similar and we'll just be able to draw another line like that and that'll complete the uh, sort of supply duct work to that grill there so that's a very basic duct drawing line and then we can also add the uh, uh, the symbols in there so I want to put a uh, say an extract grill on there I'll just go to my my symbols so I'll click schematic symbol and then I go to my ventilation tab and there's my extract grill which I want to stick on there so I'll stick it on the end and you'll find that these little blue dots on here you'll see they're really quite handy because they're like snaps so we've programmed these symbols so that it'll snap so you can see it snaps directly to the end so you're not having to like, shove those around later or use the align tool all over the place so it makes things a lot easier to draw with so once you've drawn the schematics there's nothing new there that was you know, apart from the palette that was as existing in magic had common tools before but the key thing here now is the ability to link so uh, what we need to do is create a link between objects in the schematic and create objects uh, linked in the model so these tools here so you can see here we've got create link we've got unlink uh, you can imagine that one just creates the link between the two one uh, disconnects the link zoom to link object will just zoom directly to the associated linked object in either the schematic or the model depending which one you're in map parameters is just a way of um, creating a configuration file so you can map parameters between the two uh, schematic and the model together and then synchronize will actually populate the parameters as uh, as required so uh, at this point I'm just going to show how to create a link so if I just show you there's there's my model you can see on the right hand side and I've got a supply and extract system which is kind of represented by this schematic here so what I want to do now is create a link so I've pre-linked some objects but I'm going to show you very quickly how you link some uh, some new ones so to click create link if the view is live here I'll be able to click on this particular grill for example 
it's asking me to create a link and all I do it, you can see it actually jumps into the schematic automatically which is quite nice and I'll just click on that and you can see now I've got these links together you can undo it you can zoom to it using these functions there and you can just continue linking 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 as as, as uh, required until you uh, complete that action and I'll just close that so I now have these links so if I press unlink it'll obviously unlink it if I zoom to link objects all I need to do is click on this object here and it will zoom to the links object in the schematic so you know exactly which one it's linking to so if you're ever in doubt you can just do that uh, the next thing to do is um, uh, map some parameters which if I click on there you will see that I have some pre-configured mapping but very briefly um, if I want to create uh, for example for the supplier device I'm just going to set the numbering system to match the model into the schematic and here's some that are pre-configured if I just click edit the way it works is you just cl click on your uh, category of object on the left hand side so uh, you can type it in the filter at the top so it could be supply there you go and then you can choose the parameter associated with that so it could be anything flow just type it in there and it will filter it by the text that you type in and then all you do is select that parameter in the model and you can see here this is schematic you just map that in so at the moment I've got a map between supplier device between this parameter which is the numbering parameter and this uh, schematic variable for that particular object so very straightforward and you can just set this configuration file to be uh, uh, you know your standard for your company or that project and so you don't have to do it every time you just do it once and then once you've done that and the map parameters you can see that we actually uh, have the ability to synchronize these parameters um, but before I do that I'm just going to quickly show you um, how we uh, create these symbols in the data set so if I just go to modify data set you'll see now there's a schematics um, header in the tree there and these are all configurable so if we go to this ventilation you can create a new category so as I was saying before in the palette all these are completely configurable by yourself uh, and then if I want to create a new damper I can select a symbol from the library if I want to and then I can put detail in there these are Revit parameters which are descriptions and family names etc for that detail item and you can also add some pre-configured parameters to that if you want to add these in there automatically so when you add it in the parameters will exist in the detail item so quite straightforward and once you add all that into the data set it will appear exactly as per that in this uh, palette that's how I've created this so very straightforward so for example this grill here you can see it's got some parameters if I added some more parameters in the data set it obviously appear in there automatically so so to save you adding those parameters all the time manually in Revit. Um, so once we've done this, um, we've uh, now linked all the items together. We've drawn the schematic as we wanted to draw it. So all we need to do now is synchronize the parameters to push this. So you'll see the numbering system. We've just got SG1111. And then here I've got uh, these numbered up 4, 5, 6, 7. So obviously there's a disparity there. So I need to just inherit the detail from the model into the schematic to get my numbering system so let's go to schematic and synchronize parameters and then you can say whether to do select objects individually uh, as a group I can do the current view so I can do the whole view that I'm in which is the schematic or I can do the whole project at once so I'm just going to do current view and as you can see here you get a summary of all the elements that have changed between the schematics these variables and the new the new values that are included in there so some of them have been for the grill numbering system you can see there SG's uh, you know for three four five six seven whatever it is and I've also got a uh, a duct um, uh, you know, properties uh, element also updated as well and you don't have to update them all you can choose which ones you want to update but in this case I'm going to update them all accept changes and you can now see that it's where that was previously blank it's now populated my my duct in the schematic uh, the line to exactly the same as the model because it inherited the values from there and you can see that all these have now changed from SG01 to 345 which is exactly the same 345 in my model so I hope you can see um, 
uh, very briefly, but um, uh, the point is that the schematic module is now uh, very powerful and I hope you can see how that workflow between the model of schematic or pushing it vice versa will really help you um, save a lot of time in your projects and also uh, maintain consistency and save mistakes between copying from one uh, environment to another so you can keep everything within Revit itself. Um, so thank you for your time and um, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.